Good morning, everybody. As you might know, I'm not the only programming channel on YouTube and I'm not the first one. Yeah, I know you're surprised. And today's with me, Gaurav. Hey. Gaurav, can you say a little bit about your channel? Hi, everyone. I'm Gaurav Sen. I talk about system design and algorithms on my channel. Don't listen, don't listen to him. His channel is just about chess. <laughs> But today we're playing chess and talking about competitive programming. Eric, I have this question. A lot of people ask me, should I start by learning all the algorithms first that I can? Learning the basic algorithms, intermediate algorithms, and then starting computer programming? Or should I just go ahead and try the very first problem which comes in the contest? I guess you can mix because doing just one thing will make you a bit bored eventually. You don't want to burn out. Mm. There are in a lot of platforms, you can sort by maybe not bif difficulty by, but by the number of accepted submissions, but it's roughly sorting by difficulty. And then this is how you can start. For example, go to Code Forces or Spoy or whatever platform there is, HackerRank, sort problems by the number of people solved, that solved it, and you're good to go. There will be some problem like given two numbers, print their sum which only can give you some technical difficulties, like how to read the input. And from there, you will solve harder and harder problems, like maybe binary search is a good start. Uh, one book that is a free PDF online that I recommend for very beginners is Competitive Programmer's Handbook. It's really from scratch. It doesn't assume that you even know what those problems are about and it will teach you basics at the very beginning. In general, if a person is just starting off, is there any site that you would recommend to them? Mm, I'm not too familiar with those good sites for beginners because I started on Polish websites. It was a lot many years ago, and uh, some of those websites don't even work anymore. They are down. Mm, I guess you can be, stick around in code forces. Ad coder beginner contests are fine. Some maybe some other platforms have contests that are very easy to. Do you think it's that important? Do you think it's very important how a person starts? Uh, is is making the base a very important deal when it comes to computer programming? Well, I don't think that by choosing a wrong platform you will learn incorrect things that later they that will like weigh you down. It's all fine. It's about maybe choosing something that will make you more efficient. If you choose a website and it turns out that, well, I don't recommend websites that don't have editorials at all, those descriptions of what a solution to a problem is, because then if you can solve a problem, what do you do? You can bug people in the internet about the solution. That's one possibility. That is quite annoying for them because Beginners should instead solve problems that have very well written editorials, solutions written down. Uh, that those problems are made so, so they would, could practice. Why do you want to take something that doesn't have a solution? Yeah, that's but an interesting take on things, yeah. And, th and then you can learn new stuff. Actually, you can learn something new. Well, if you take a problem without a solution written down, you can only solve it if you're well, capable to solve it. You will not learn a new technique. But other than that, everything is fine. Maybe one platform would be 10% 10, 10 more efficient for you than the other, but it's hard to say. So just if you like maybe user experience on some website because it's more, more colorful or it has leaderboard of the number of problems solved, that's enough of a reason to use it. What do you think about uh, computer programming as a profession? So there was a recent survey that I had asked people to take and also the International Labour Organization had partnered with one of these companies, Sound Rocket. They were really interested in knowing that can a person do computer programming full time through prize money, through sponsorships, etc, etc. I know Kennedy is, is capable of doing that, but he seems to be the only person who's capable of doing that. Well, at, the, at the moment, uh, I mean, yeah. If, if you count just competitive programming, it's very hard to live for, for, uh, for prizes because I think if you take the sum of all the prizes out there, 
early yearly, you will not get that big amount, plus some of them are only for university students. And indeed, for example, Gennady can live just from maybe Google, winning Google Code Jam every year. It's, I think, $15,000. Uh, but there is also opportunity cost. We are talking about good programmers that are able to get to, say, Google or just almost every startup or a big company and earn at least several thousand dollars a month. Yeah, $15,000 doesn't seem like that big a price, to be honest. Yeah, that's right. It's it's a nice price for a university student that doesn't have a job yet, but not for a full-time engineer. Um, I think there there is a big market around coding interviews. There is money there. And like I also do some coaching related to that. But I I wouldn't want to just you know stick to competitive programming and uh, support my family just from that forever because it's very hard. And I'm not just now talking about competing and relying on prizes. And that's by the way very dangerous in the future because you're assuming that you will still be one of the best. Uh, what you know that there will be new people the, that are younger and more brilliant than you. So that's very risky. The more the opportunity cost, don't you think the risk is lesser? Because if, let's take Kennedy, and he, um, let's say there's somebody who's more brilliant or is basically more successful in corporate programming contests than him, a new guy comes in. Kennedy can always get a software engineering job. It's not like the person is going to starve or something. In well, the worst case, yeah. There is still some opportunity because that is hard to measure. It's, uh, uh, by the way, we just got a draw and I remember it was 10 seconds before that we, you said that you don't want to get a draw because you often get that. <laughs> yeah, this is a stalemate. This is pretty... Personally, I do feel like my mind gets locked onto the result if I think about it too much. That's very important if you really care about the competition. For example, recently I did Google Kickstart and I knew that those problems are relatively easy and people in the top will solve things in around 20 minutes. Then it's a waste of time to just look at the leaderboard and say, even think in what order I should solve problems or see, am I right now winning? Am I top five? No, it would be a waste of time. And actually I won that competition by two seconds and even if once I would look uh, at the white, at the leaderboard, I would lose. Yeah, that's amazing. Of course, that's, that's a that's... different thing because there, here we're not talking in chess about losing one second. We're talking about a psychological aspect, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, but it's quite similar in a way because here's a person who's instead of their mind completely focusing on the problem at hand is thinking about something else, which is the result. And the result is something that you're moving towards automatically. Like even when in your Google Kickstart contest, you're moving towards the result. It's not like if you do something, then it's going to change. Yes, I mean, the time right. is going to move as slowly as, as uh, it will. Yeah, that's a waste of time, focus, brain. Yeah. <laughs> Has it ever happened to you that you see a problem um, on a corporate programming contest and you solve it in a way that the tester or the setter didn't think about? And then you... Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. That's, that's something quite interesting in life because when you have some sort of an idea and you say that this is going to be solved this way and somebody comes up with a much simpler idea which is going to solve that problem. It happens all the time, at least at work. Maybe... If you look at some Kickstart projects, uh, we maybe would see some of that there. Like for sure, there you can see some ideas that seem good. Like for example, a camp on the river. You know, you can have a tent on the river that is in some way connected to a land with a string. Well, this is not about not seeing better solution, but what maybe creators didn't predict and didn't think about too much is that if something breaks, if something bad happens, then you're trapped in, maybe not in a coffin, but in, 
in some material in water and you have very low chance of survival. So, yeah, it's possible not to predict something, but is that really similar to competitive programming? I wouldn't say so. Okay, thank you all for watching. If you want to hear a bit more us talking and playing games, and of course me winning all the games, question mark, then head out to Gaurav's channel for his part of the video. See you all, bye bye.